Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen around the world, wherever you may be. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio with my really new and good friend, Dr. Joel Rosen. Joel, what is up, my brother? Hey, man, I'm really excited to be here, getting riffed and go down these rabbit holes and 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 give your audience a lot of value in, in the process. Well, that's inevitable. So just real quick background. I actually had the was blessed and privileged to listen to his lecture at the Biohacking Congress in Las Vegas, which Joel, by the way, dude, is almost now two months ago, which is insane to think how fast time is flying. And of all the people that spoke there, and I'm not blowing smoke up his ass, his podcast fascinated, podcast, his uh, presentation fascinated me. And I went up to him and I introduced myself after to him. And he, it, the funniest thing is he's like, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't really talk to you. He's like, I was nervous. And I'm like, nervous. Like, you know, your shit backwards and forwards, but it's funny because like, the truth is, is like, you know, we all react differently, you know, when we're on stage and when we're in an unfamiliar environment and, you know, the lighting was all weird in that place where we were speaking and all that stuff. Anyway, so it's so cool. But so I'm really grateful that you're here today. So you guys, let me just give you a little bit about his bio. Um, he is the founder of the truth about adrenal fatigue.com. This guy knows more about adrenal fatigue than any clinician I've ever heard speak. His mission is to expose the truth about adrenal fatigue, burnout, men and women, so that we can empower a hundred million people to go from exhausted to energized the truth is adrenal fatigue goes much deeper than the adrenals. Dr. Joel teaches stressed out adults that recovery requires this understanding. So first, as I always do now on the Jay Campbell podcast, because we are in extraordinary times, extraordinary times, Joel, where do you see humanity going? And I know it's an opinion question and there's no right or wrong answer, but where are we going? Are we on the way to quote unquote, the new earth and building a golden age or are we on the last legs of you know this epic in humanity this close to complete self destruction oh interesting question to get us started yeah definitely i, I think it's I, i'm from toronto canada and when i moved to the us i, I we, we, canadians are proud to be canadian except after what's happened with the with the right. pandemic and i look back and i'm i'm almost uh, just uh, crazily ashamed of the way that it got handled. But anyways, long story short, I, I see the U.S. as being the best of the best and the worst of the worst, right? The best of the best education, the best of the best nutrition and science, but also the worst of the worst. And I think that's that's kind of how I would answer that question as well in terms of I do feel that we are past the point of no return in a lot of ways, which can be very daunting and disheartening for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and, you know, we talked about 88% of the population being metabolically healthy and how many of those are obese. And that's with even ranges that are, aren't even considered in our world healthy. Oh, so yes. yeah. I, I think that's a reflection of the earth, right? Yeah. The, the, right. the more unhealthy we are, it's cells, systems, tissues, organ sure. systems, all our frequencies. And the sicker we are, the sicker our planet is, the sicker our planet is, the sicker we are. So I, I do hold out hope that, that that we can turn the tides and, and really make uh, effective changes. But, I, you know, I, I it's think hard, it's, man. Yeah, it's dreadful that we don't think about saving the planet for our, our generations underneath us. And I think that it's a great question. I never really thought about it, but I don't. I'm not too optimistic. I'm on the on the on the side of more more harm than good, if you will. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great answer, by the way. Uh, you know, as I told you, I was talking to Dr. Fred Moss. I only bring the best clinicians and high frequency humans on the Jay Campbell podcast nowadays, and that's a blessing. And you know, I'm get, I'm humbled that I'm able to. Uh, but in truth, 
he was the, he was the same. You know, we both came to the observation that negative or neutral. Like if you're a realist and again, you wouldn't not you would have to be to be on my show. Like you can't see a positive outcome. I mean, as you just said, the world is sick. By every measurable standard, people are not personally accountable. They're not sovereign. They're not empowered. They have literally been taught by social media and whatever God knows force behind that, the, you know, the narrative architects, uh, that they don't have to take accountability, bro. It's not their fault. You were born fat. You were born trans. You don't identify as this or that. I mean, you and I could go on all day. And so because of that, people that are personally accountable and sovereign and empowered, you know, we look at that, like you just said, and we're like, well, fuck. How in the hell are we going to solve this? So, you know, he also said, well, you know, Jay, there's always the possibility of divine intervention, you know, a miracle. And, all, you know, all through history, there have been miracles. So, you know, if, if Joel, if we really are in this, you know, world duality and the Star Wars, you know, mythos of the forces of light and the forces of dark, you know, my good, our good friend back here is real, and it probably is in some form or fashion, then it really does come down to us individually, bro. It, it really does come down to where are we vibrating at? What are we doing to serve, you know, everybody that we are influencing or influenced by, you know, and are we doing it our highest and best? And I know you are, and that's where we're going to get into the topics. But I mean, I was talking to my good friend yesterday who owns Vantis, uh, the, the big international company in Newport Beach that, you know, is really responsible for helping people with hair loss. They're amazing. You know, they actually are very advanced and they're not, you know, DHT inhibitor nonsense people. They, they know what's going on. And he said, dude, for the first, he's a very successful guy. His name's Logan Gula. He said, for the first time in my life, I have no answers for anything. People ask me, where do you put your money? Where do you invest? What can you do right now? You know, and, and there's no answer. And I think, you know, reflective of your, our conversation right now, <laughs> It's like, all you can do right now, Joel, is live in the moment. There is no other option. You can't think about what may have happened, I mean, what happened in the past and what might happen in the future because everything is so precarious. And so if there was ever a better time, I think in world history, and I know I'm obviously defining it just from you and me's experience right now, but I mean, clearly nothing is solid right now, right? Like you, you and I could wake up tomorrow morning and the financial system collapses. There's a bank, a run on Wells Fargo, and all of a sudden, none of us can get our money out of our bank. We can't access our ATM. We can't buy anything online. Amazon goes down. You know what I'm saying? Like everything hangs in the balance. And so, if it does truly hang in the balance, you sure the fuck can't worry about it or think about it. All you can do is live your purpose and your passion and your mission, which you're doing every day, I'm doing every day. And, and again, the importance of putting out podcasts like this so that people who hear this shit can be like, yeah. All I can do is what I got control over, which is yourself and maybe your wife and your children, right? But you don't have control over anything else, bro. You don't have any control over your fucking patients. You can be the greatest clinician, tell them all this stuff about, you know, adrenal fatigue. And, you know, I can tell people to do this, that, and the other, and it doesn't mean shit if they don't do it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I'm sure your audience knows the term metabolic flexibility. And I, I would say the world is not metabolically flexible. And, right. and, you know, you mentioned that with the previous interviewer and you also said with me that I was nervous and, and it takes w wisdom to, to, to be okay and sit with that. And, yep. I, you know, I was, I was nervous, but it wasn't the old me that would be anxious and, and like just o overwhelmed and stage fright and embracing that suck almost. Right. So the, the whole point is when it's, when the world is fragile, and and you're not doing your part to be metabolically healthy right you're you're going to be that much more breakable when right. those things happen so but you're right i mean i never really thought of it as that way but the, we are very fragile and i like the word sovereign sovereign's a great word that, that implies self accountability yes yes right? beautifully said and by the way dude you didn't appear nervous but it's funny because we do feel something internal that isn't really external, right? So it actually goes back to like, you know, how we think creates our reality. So like on the outside to, you know, and again, I'm, 
the guy who watches and speaks and you know, like you. And like, I was like, dude, your shit was insane. I mean, did I not come up to you and literally, you didn't you know did, about I, him and I was like, bro, that was I fucking cool. wow. and I, and I told you, I really appreciated that. I was like, you know, it sucks that we are a society of going our out of our way to tell right. people how terrible things are. So to have, aren't we, but you know, to you very seldom have people go out of their way to compliment people. And, and, and when you do have that, my wife's that way, I'm that way. You're obviously yep. that way. Yep. Um, it, I, I think it, it's a paradigm shift, you know, and it oh. was, it was, it was well received. I appreciated that a lot. I really well, yeah. And, 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 you know, gr- you, you deserve it. I mean, again, bro, I, I don't give a lot of people the opportunity to say that. I mean, like what you said was, you know, really profound and it took a lot of courage too, because, you know, you were saying like, you know, average clinician, you know, look, how many clinicians are going to talk shit about other clinicians? Right. And it's everybody is in, in my opinion, and I know yours too, everyone is open season. Okay. We can't make a better world if we can't actually also point out the problems and the flaws. And you and I both know the allopathic medical system is a fucking disaster. I mean, dude, if I shared with you a, a conversation that I had with a, 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 a very well-known A-list person in San Diego just yesterday on my ride back from Los Angeles to where I live in, in Marietta and in wine country, I mean, dude, I was perplexed. I, I mean, I was like, Jesus Christ, I thought I had heard it all. So the allopathic community is broken it's never been more broken after the last two and a half years. And if you're a listener of this, you know, I only bring on the world's best clinicians and we're about to get into his meat and potatoes. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, man, like you as a consumer slash patient slash student of life, you got to do your homework now. It's never been more important. You cannot just, but my co payment and my family doctor and my PPO doctor, I mean, get the fuck out of here. That shit has died. That ship sailed. You got to work with specialists. It's as simple as that, especially relative to your, you know, whatever you have that you're dealing with. And as you said already, dude, 88% of people in the United States right now are not metabolically flexible. And we're being nice, bro. Cause I haven't said this to you. Uh, I got a study sent to me the other day and it was a small sample size, but they said that in the West, 80% of adults over the age of 40 right now are classified as obese. Okay. Obese. So as you know, Joel, better than me, what does that do to the allopathic, you know, insurance-based medical system from a burden standpoint in the next three to five years? I think it collapses it. How does it Yeah. It does, but it also keeps the pharmaceutical companies super, super rich, you know, like, so at some point, yeah, at some point you got to pay the piper, you know, at some point the, the tax man wants his dues. Right. So yeah. Crazy bro. Okay. So first point, the truth about adrenal fatigue goes deeper than the adrenals. Now I want to set this up by saying that, uh, adrenal fatigue and just adrenal issues has always fascinated me, even since back before I even got into this space and I was just a dork researching things, you know, I always tell people uh, in the hormone optimization space that, you know, you have to look at everything as a symphony orchestra, right? You've got the endocrine system, you've got the pituitary, and you've got the thyroid, and then ult- ultimately you got the parathyroid and you got the adrenals. But all of these things have to be, you know, as again, as a symphony in a, in a synergy, and you can't optimize one without considering the other. So I wanted to set that up. Uh, very few people do this right. Clearly you do. I mean, again, I listened to your lecture, but you know, can you just kind of talk about, um, the point of, you know, how deep it goes? Oh yeah. So, so it starts out with my own health challenges and stress and graduate school and being on an IV of caffeine all the time and working out and late nights and study and, and so forth and so on and sugar cravings. But ultimately Adrenal fatigue, the, 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 the thought that we have about it is that the adrenals fatigue, they get exhausted and tired and they can no longer keep up with the stressors of life. And, and then that causes a whole set of energy and hormones and uh, libido and circadian rhythm. But ultimately, the further and further I went down that rabbit hole, the, the more I realized it's, it's all bullshit in the sense that 
simply stated, you're not making energy at the demand that your body requires. And, and if you're not making energy at the demand that your body requires, just like in life, if you're not making income at the demand your life requires, you got to start to make some hard decisions. And the bigger the discrepancy between how much you make and how much you, you, you have to spend each month, the bigger choices you're going to have to make. And yeah. so from a, from a 30,000 view foot level, Jay, if, you, if you're not making money and you could barely keep the, the lights on from a power standpoint, you might be buying food. You're certainly not going out for dinner. You're not, you're not doing the creature comforts that you want. And the same thing happens in our body. And, and it, 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 the HPA axis signals that and it, it coordinates that. But the majority of the problems occur outside of the adrenals. And I did a lot of research on it. And the, the, it goes back to 1855, I believe, where Addison, there was a doctor, Dr. Addison, and they determined that there's this thing called Addison's disease where yep. you, your gland doesn't produce enough hormone and that would be called Addison's disease. And so they never t taught it in, in, a, in school because unless it's black and white, you, you do a test and your adrenals don't produce uh, enough cortisol, it's not a problem. So, yeah. so that's, I guess that's the overhanging d problem when someone with adrenal fatigue, like challenges goes to see their doctor, their doctor is going to poo poo them and say, well, there's no such right. thing as adrenal right. fatigue. You right. there's Addison's or there's not. And, and the education is ass backwards because they're not teaching the majority of the problems occur outside of the adrenal glands, feedback loops, uh, you know, deactivation of hormones, uh, binding more proteins, uh, even things like heat shock proteins. There are right. so many different things that our body does to make sure that we can keep an equilibrium between demand and supply that involves every cell of the body that yep. doctors aren't taught about. So I, I guess that we can start from there and, and let me know what, what questions you have from that. <laughs> Dude, I love you, man. Yeah. Epic. I mean, look, I am talking to you right now, full disclosure, because doctors don't know shit about hormone optimization. Jay Campbell went down the rabbit hole at 29, almost 30. I was a month from turning 30, getting kicked in the testicles and learning how to do this shit on my own. Now, granted, I was a nerd. I had a molecular biology minor, which I was not using in my life, but it allowed me to read studies and understand science. But I mean, again, same shit. I mean, how did I learn all this? Well, I learned it through the school of hard knocks. I administered every delivery system. I worked with 20 plus doctors. You know, I, I made every mistake. You know, you, you know, this term being from Canada, you know, I stepped on my dick as many times as I needed to step on my dick to learn. Right. So it's like, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't even be having this conversation. So the same thing with adrenal fatigue. I mean, I, you know, I think of the book and I know you're familiar with this book, but stop the thyroid madness. Think of all the women who still to this day can't even get accurately diagnosed for thyroid issues, right? Like it's common knowledge for somebody like you to know like, hey man, you have your second kid or a third kid, your, your thyroid's going to be fucked. You're probably going to have a malfunctioning thyroid unless you're really genetically blessed in an anomaly. You're going to have to optimize your thyroid. And again, I still hear these fucking guys who don't even look at their thyroid you know what I'm saying? Like these women are all depressed. They have no sexual function. They're 40 years old. They just had their third kid and there's nobody coming to help them because they're, they don't, they don't get it. It's insane, bro. Yeah. You know, with the thyroid too, I always look at it that as an effect. The one of the life changing ways that I had about thyroid uh, paradigm shift for me was that it's an oxygen sensor in the cell. Right. So right. if if you're like I, again, I break that the the problem with demand and supply as easy as you got a metabolic problem. You're not converting the food you eat and the air you breathe into energy. Right. You, 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 your income sucks and you have a lot of overhead. And when you don't have the ability to combine the food you eat with the oxygen, the air you breathe to make energy you actually create an expense. So I, I use this example a lot. It's like, okay, Jay, come work for me next week. And instead of me paying you a check at the end of the week, you got to owe, you owe me an invoice. That's right. what's happening in our body. Exactly. And if you're not able to move that iron and oxygen out of your tissues, 
it's going to rust on the inside. And your body's not stupid. Your thyroid's going to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to bring more. I'm sensing that there's an oxygen problem here. I'm not going to bring more oxygen to the cell to put more fuel on the fire. So the body does in its inf infinite intelligence, slows down that thyroid. And it does a lot of things to do that. It can it can lower the T4 production, slow down conversion to T3. It makes more reverse T3, makes right. thyroid antibodies. It does a lot of stuff. But then we think we're smarter than the intelligence of the body. It's like, nope, we got to, we got to overcome this and i don't mind stop gaps like okay let's yeah. give some thyroid support while we go upstream and figure out right. why but it's not a set it and forget it. okay like you're here by like right. sentence to thyroid hormone for the rest of your life right. and we'll just have to keep raising the level because right. of receptor site down regulation right. blah 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 you know so that that was a life changer for me and then keeping to go down these different rabbit holes and realizing what I talked about in terms of mineral balance and not having enough bioavailable copper, um, that that's a whole other story, but yeah. it would make sense that your body would do these things to preserve metabolic. I say like TSH is the, is the jockey and T4 is the horse. And if, if your horse is running um, not fast enough, you don't necessarily have to get the jockey to whip it harder. You got to figure out why is the horse not running fast enough? And that's what doctors don't do because insurance models don't pay for that. Oh, I was just and, say that. Yeah. And, you know, pharmaceuticals aren't in the business of not getting people off their drugs, you know. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. What do you think the percentage of women mid thirties and up that have adrenal issues and thyroid issues that are, and, and you're the expert, you know, your opinion, you know, really holds water here. I mean, it's gotta be off the charts. I mean, at least if we know it's 88% and more for metabolic issues, then that's already the, 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 the downstream widget, right? right? Meaning like there's assembly line problems that lead to that widget. So adrenal health and thyroid health and hormone health and demand and supply. It's like saying, it's like saying how many people that earn minimum wage do you think have houses in, in, right. in Mexico or right. on the Riviera, you know, not very right. many of them. Right. So, you know, I'd probably say higher than 88%. Jesus. I mean, I mean, that has got to be the biggest health crisis because I mean, without solving those issues, Joel, they're, 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 like you said, they're, I mean, metabolic flexibility is not even consideration. I mean, they're doomed. They're doomed to have insulin resistance, metabolic derangement, obesity, visceral fat body, you know, uh, you know, deposition. I mean, you're right. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, again, we, the statistics are 80% of people are obese over the age of 40. And that is literally that, you know, that, that obesity is coming from the things that you solve for and treat. I mean, this is literally the biggest problem that our society, you know, experiences right now. I mean, it, it, I mean, I'm not, you know, overselling this. I mean, really is. I mean, you, you look at the food, the air, the water, you know, even the fucking best water on earth is in a plastic fucking bottle. I mean, you can't escape the degradation, the, 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 you know, the siege that our biological systems, you know, endure every single day from modernization. Right. And it's all leading to, you know, that deregulation or dysfunction of both, you know, again, the adrenal system, the, the thyroids, like you said, the hormones, I mean, everything is a symphony and everything is being decimated. And Joel, again, the average person, you know, this is what I was talking about this morning on a podcast that I did with another doctor, a great podcast. Also, the average person has nowhere to go, bro. They're not you and me, they, you know, they're not listening to us. Like they have no clue. I mean, how many of these people don't even know and never know? what it is. 
you, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I went to the A4M meeting two weekends ago and yep. I went to the Metabolic Summit this weekend. And what I feel, Jay, is the elephant in the room is the, okay, well, what do we do about this? You, you know, it's great to rub elbows. And as, right. especially from what you were saying, there was a conference where the doctors weren't even talking about actual advances in therapeutics. They're just talking about the the old myths and the sacred it's cows. Old. that. But but with the ones that do know, and it's encouraging. And that's the thing is, I think as as the older generation, the baby boomers die, the younger generation will have different thought processes, right? But at the at the end of the day, I think that the the elephant in the room is providers should have a responsibility to to impact public health at a, at at a at more of a level than just giving the information. I'll give you an example. They tax the or they subsidized sugar and f- corn right. for very cheap meals. So if you're a right. impoverished socioeconomic lower class not educated want to be healthy and and you work three jobs and you got to feed your kids are you going to buy the organic cauliflower are you going to buy the the cheap you know so there's an onus on providers to be able to not just say these are the things that make you healthier but how do you actually implement them and make it affordable and i think we vote with our dollar when we spend stuff and so that's the part where i think where we could have better changes is to to make it so that foods are subsidized that are healthy and that sugar and corn are are taxed and um, and then the, the everything will follow suit, you know? Do you think to that point, do you think, and kind of, you know, I put you on the spot at the beginning of the show and, you know, we're both kind of like half empty, maybe neutral. Do you think the system, Joel, has to collapse first? Do we have I, to go t- to collapse? I, I think, I mean, th- so, something like that. I think that, you know, it's, it, it something sucks to have to ask you the question, right? Because yeah. it's a brutal question. But I mean, really, you know, they always say in the ancient texts and the ancient books, they talk about there has to be darkness before dawn. Are we heading to that tipping culmination darkness, which is yeah. chaos yeah. before we get to we move to the next chapter? Yeah, I mean, it, it appears to be so in yeah. terms, especially with type two diabetes and oh. Alzheimer's and and these things. That's the shame thing about it is it's 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 preventable, right? You, you know, it's it. so, so it. preventable. Yeah. So, but I would like to see what I would like to see is if it were possible, people stop to, to take their money out of third parties and right. then just have health savings accounts and then start yeah. to vote with their dollar. But I, I don't even think that would happen. I got a podcast coming up with someone that was in the insurance industry and talking about some of the things that have to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think that there has to be a, a revolution, you know, and, yeah. and revolutions aren't yeah. pretty all, all the time. No, they're not, bro. And, you know, it's funny because as you were talking to me, the guy who sold uh, the agent that sold, you know, my company that, you know, we just closed three weeks ago, just messaged me like out of the blue. He's like, hey, man, you know, we're like joking because like during the the sale, the due diligence period of our sale, you know, he was like coaching me and my partner, Nick, to not say anything about the economy and, you know. Everybody knows we're on the precipice. And, you know, obviously, you know, I know, you know, just from the last three or four days, I mean, the fucking market has been insane the last three or four days, right? Like a lot of guys are like jumping off ledges, you know, crypto is being wiped out. I mean, there's nowhere to hide. And so he just sent me a, a message that was like, okay, now we can talk, <laughs> you know, because he just came up from air or whatever. And I'm just like joking. I haven't been, responded back, but I was like, in my back of my mind, I was laughing as you were saying all that, because it's like, dude, I mean. Like I said, we're in unprecedented times and all you can do right now is you show up every day to work and work with your patients and be kind and be compassionate and be empathetic and help them. And it's the same thing with me in my calls, in my groups, compassion. But th- that right now is what we can do as human beings to serve you know, the footprint that we identify with and we influence every day in a way that you know won't you know, it, you know, I don't like using the word harm, but you know, there, there's only benefit Joel for that, you know, in the universe, it, you know, in our karmic footprint or imprint or whatever you want to call it, like by doing that. And I feel like right now that's literally all we can do. I know I'm kind of rabbit holing, but that is what is important right now for people to understand. It's not to get caught up in 
you know, is the financial system going to collapse? You know, are we going to go to zombie apocalypse? Like all you can do is literally live in the moment and be a good father, be a good husband, be a good clinician, you know, work with the people that you have influence over and literally just, again, stay compassionate for everybody. And I just, you know, I, it, I mean, obviously I'm blessed that I get a chance and, and so do you, cause you have your own podcast too, but we get a chance to talk to people who really are with it, you know? Cause I mean, obviously bro, like general society is not with it. You know, we wouldn't have this podcast talking about these problems if these people were aware of this kind of stuff, because it wouldn't be going on, but there's just, there's such a dichotomy on the planet today of those who are aware and those who aren't. And I think to get to, you know, you already said it, but to get to, get to a place where enough are aware it does have to break the system is the systems are flawed and failed bro right yeah yeah you know I, one of the words that I, terms i like is oxygen consumption rate so think about the i use the analogy of being stuck in first gear when you're trying to accelerate onto the highway right. you're you, right. it's not that your engine isn't working hard enough it's working harder than it should and it's not going anywhere to me, that's a high oxygen consumption rate. You, your body is demanding you make energy, so you need more oxygen. And, and there's a supply and demand on that, meaning I can control my oxygen consumption rate by yeah. tempering my, my emotion or label that I attach to something. So we talked about that in terms of not putting a label on yourself or um, experience that happened that was, that was not looked at. It was, it was not looked at as as a as a healthy happy benefiting thing for you um but when you put a meaning to it and it sucked and it ruined my life and it made me right. worse and this that and the other that holds an energy in you but it That's also right. increases your consumption of oxygen so I, I think if you can create your own energy footprint in your body by managing your limbic center which is obviously the emotion the meaning the 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 sort of what the what that event placed on you and just look at it in an unbiased way uh then then that will also allow you to get through the the tough times right that's beautiful bro i mean that's balance you know if i was if i was just like tr translating what you just said i mean it's it's literally balance it's coming to the center remaining calm you know from a spiritual standpoint there's no way to allow your higher self, your true self, your super conscious wisdom, your intuition to lead you unless you are calm, cool, and collected. I mean, it's impossible. The, 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 the higher self cannot step to the forefront with the drunk monkey and the autonomic nervous system and the ego and the mind, you know, racing about, sending all these fucking thoughts and feedback loops in your mind until you get to that place. So that's exactly what you're saying. I love that, the oxygen consumption. Okay, so a couple other uh, points that you brought up, and they're all relevant. Um, can you talk a little bit about the relationship between mast cell activation and HPA axis dysfunction? And again, you know, this is for the people that don't know what the fuck that means scientifically. We're talking about the hormonal imbalances that most people are suffering from today without a fucking clue that they have a hormonal imbalance. And let me just set this up, and you know this, but... The average guy, average gal goes to the doctor in their mid thirties. And by the way, dude, you know, it's not just mid thirties anymore. Now, now it's mid twenties. Okay. Doc got no sexual energy or function. Can't get a hard on. The wife is, you know, no libido dry. Right. And but they're not going to see you, you know, they're going to their PPO doctor or their HMO doctor or whatever. And then, you know what they do, they write them a script for an SSRI because they have brain fog or depression too. And, you know, maybe an erectile dysfunction drug and the women, same shit. And so now again, it's just the band-aiding of the symptoms. There's no root cause, at, you know, being addressed. There's no, you know, fundamental, fundamental regenerative approach which is what you teach and stuff. But I mean, it's like, it, it, it's mind blowing. So again, talk about that. Sure. So, so again, supply and demand, right? I, if, if I have little income and big expenses, right. I'm not putting an addition on the house, right. right? And the addition on the house is sexual function, right? right. Having a baby, getting pregnant, having libido, right. motivation and drive. So it, it makes sense from a 30,000 view foot that when you're in a deficit, you're, you're not spending or you shouldn't be spending. Right. Uh, otherwise it's going to have a collapse. Right. So, um, but as far as, as far as one of the changing 
I guess, principles for me was whatever stimulates, when we say HPA axis, it's basically your hypothalamus, pituitary adrenals. The hypothalamus is in the brain and so is the pituitary, but the hypothalamus is tied to our limbic center, our reptilian right. fight or flight, food, fornication, you know, fear, all of that fight, all of that, that reptilian's brain thing. And you had what, to say reptilian on this podcast, didn't you, bro? I am uh, sorry. I, so the, so as far as the, the stress, the, the stress impacts that, but something called mast cells impacts that. And mast cells are, are basically a best way of saying it is our immune system. And uh, unfortunately our environment is 24 hours stimulating our immune system slash our mast cells, whether it's 5g or it's, um, the dopamine that we get with our cell phones and the notifications, or it's the glyphosates in our foods, the iron enriched filings in our foods, the B vitamins in our foods, the hormones in our foods, the antibiotics in our foods, all of the above, those will stimulate your immune system right. to, to mount a response. And then what happens is that stimulates your HPA axis. And when that's stuck in the on position, you start to have feedback loop system breakdowns. You start to, it's not so much robbing Peter to pay Paul, but what it is, is it's more of like, cause pregnenolone steel is more of a, uh, of a, it doesn't actually happen. You have different zones in the adrenals that secrete different hormones. And when you have an increased demand for stress response, then it's more catabolic. You're going to be breaking down the, the hormone that's released from the pituitary to the adrenals are going to preferentially make more cortisol at the expense of DHEA. So you break down the body and you're no longer building. The adrenals are amazing in the sense that they're both a catabolic hormone uh, gland and an anabolic. For some right. people, they tend to have genetic expressions where that whole stress thing goes on, but instead of making more cortisol to break down, they make more DHEA to build up. And you'll right. see that with PCOS women or men that have more of the 5-DHT and the prostate issues. So it's really weird to see that for the same physiological breakdown, someone may have a, a different hormone profile than someone else. Um, and that can dance around. So you may get better and then you may get worse or it might be more prolonged. And it, it just sort of, it's never linear in terms of up, 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 down, down, down. It's dancing all around. And, and ultimately what will happen is when you don't have enough energy to meet the demand every day, then of course your hormone, your pituitaries, your testosterone, estrogen's not being cleared out. You're not producing progesterone. Your testosterone's converting. There's so many different ways that it, it unfolds. And then the sad part is, then the doctors will give an aromatase inhibitor or they'll just give you a you know more DHEA or more pregnenolone but they're not looking at hey how do we create less expenses how do we lower the the overhead cuz i would say if i'm a i'm a i'm a um, consultant to your body and if if we need to create more balance between your your asset and your liability it's so much easier to start slashing your expenses Right. We, you know, we once we slash the expense and create more of a surplus, then we can invest in more of a sales force or we can, you know, open up a, another another a marketing location. Team to build all your funnels. Yeah. 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 So I, I hope that answers your question. And in, in that, no, in that it's way. awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, but just to add to that, you know, because one of your points, and I think it's, you know, tangential right now is to, you know, how do we go from catabolic to anabolic? Right. Well, the first thing is m being aware of that oxygen consumption, right? Like if we had a gauge and saying you're, you're in the red, you know, that, that would help us a lot. And the bottom line, Jay, is quality food, quality yeah. food. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you have to have quality food. And, and that, that means food something, that medicine, you, man. Yeah. something that your grandmother would recognize for food, right? Like it has to That's be exactly right, dude really nutrient dense. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of the times it's not going to be nutrient dense, even in the best of fields. So I, I think you have to have a solid regimen of nutrients that are going to replace those minerals. But I, I think if we start with the easy stuff in terms of good quality food, being aware of your oxygen consumption, 
um, appreciating and gra being grateful for tribulations right. that you know, because um, I do believe you can start not having things happen to you, but having things happening from you. You know, when you start yeah. to c control that and manifest, like to your point, manifesting your your what you have. But I think that's the starting point is good quality food, minerals, oxygen consumption rate, right? and then starting to get more specific with the the nutrients that you might get from supplements and so forth. But that's the starting point. Dude, I got to say something that's funny that you just said that again, everything is now synchronicities. There's no coincidences at all. Anybody who thinks there's coincidences in the universe is just not aware. We talked about that this morning. He was talking about iron deficiencies in women in perimenopausal, menopausal, and then postmenopausal women and how that is like the greatest contributor to disease and death you know, in women, you know, their hair falls out. They have no sexual function. A lot of them get cancer. I mean, you know, it goes on and on, and, you know, so it's like that little thing, but you know, you just said it, bro. We don't think about this. And again, you and I are of an age that we probably as young kids did have this. Nobody even cooks in cast iron skillets and pans anymore. So they're not getting fucking iron unless they're going to you and you're testing for it. And you're like, you're fucking deficient in iron and you need to supplement with iron. I mean, think of how many women and, and obviously, you know, because of men, unless you're phlebotomizing them, which again, that's a whole nother problem. You know, all these docs are like over phlebotomizing people because they don't really understand hematocrit and hemoglobin. And again, that's a rabbit hole. I don't want to even get into it. But at the end of the day, Starting with good nutrition, this is education. You and I know what good nutrition is because we did not grow up in the instant gratification day and age. You know, our parents taught us basic shit as a kid of what was good nutrition. But Joel, I, and again, I'm not disparaging millennials, even though I love the disparage millennials and Gen Z or whatever the fuck they're called. Dude, they don't even know what good nutrition is. I mean, I mean, I mean, you you realize this, right? Like, if you say to them, like, eat organic, they think that's like a, a label on an instant food that they put in a microwave or in a fucking uh, what do you call it, an air fryer that says organic on the label. They don't even know what it is. So, I mean, like, it's sad to think, and you know, and yes, it's economic, and yes, they can't afford it. But now there is a serious like differentiation gap, and it's definitely just due to age and education. Where they're not even taught, bro, like what is made, you know, I mean, look, one of my good friends used to say, if God didn't make it, you probably shouldn't eat it. And that was about as basic as you could get to understand like what's being, you know, farmed and sustainably grown and wildcat and organic and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, these young people today, bro, there's no nutritional education whatsoever. Their food consists of Grubhub or macaroni in a cup. I mean, it's insane. Like, how do you even like, how do you cross that bridge? You know, again, it's, to me, it's a generational divide. You know, I mean, I know education, you know, for baby boomers, I mean, they're the worst when it comes to nutrition. They didn't have it. You know, our generation had it and then maybe a little bit downstream after it, but now it's gone again, dude. They're not teaching kids anything about nutrition. Yeah. I mean, if you just easy stick to those outer aisles, right. And like, you're right. If it's, if, if it's made to the farm, it's if made it's from the farm. Clean, motherfucker, yeah. You can eat it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or if it had a mom, you, you know, like kind of thing. So I don't know. It, it, it is discouraging. That's for sure. Um, but I do feel that there, there, like I said, there's, as you, the the frequencies rise above yeah. the turmoil, they start to resonate and find each other and, and make, you know, there's a lot more power in concentration. Right. Right. So you don't need the majority to be powerful. Right. And so I'm, I guess that's and, and I do think that you have conscientious kids these days. I right. think I, I, at least I hope, you know, that there's enough of them that. Ha well, that it's up to there. us. I mean, you know, my kids are, your kids are, I mean, look, dude, at the end of the day, it does come down to us and you're right. It's, you know, as Hawkins would say, all you need is 20% vibrating above the line of integrity to move the collective consciousness of the whole. So right. you're right. It doesn't take everybody. It takes a small, village initially to create a frequency that raises the collective consciousness of the planet. And honestly, it is going to happen, bro. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm at the end of the day, I really am a glass half full guy. 
I really do in my heart of hearts believe that we will create the golden age in the new earth. And honestly, as I was talking to Dr. Moss before you, bro, we may have to create our own reality that, you know, people like us literally might be living in eco-friendly farms or zones in Ecuador or Belize or Costa Rica or Montana or Mexico or wherever the fuck it is. I mean, I don't know. And again, I'm not going to sit here and future prophesize, but you know, as he was saying, which is interesting, you know, of itself, but I mean, look, it's not like the metaverse is going to go anywhere. It's not like they're not telling us about the social credit systems and the surveillance you know, and the, you know, whatever you want to call it, the great reset, the NWO. I mean, look, this is what they, you know, they put, they put their cards on the table, Joel. Okay. Again, they, uh, you know, you said reptilian, you know, won't go any further than that. I mean, I don't know, but at the end of the day, I do control my thoughts. I do control my oxygen consumption. I do control my energy signature. I can absolutely keep my frequency in resonance Yes, I'm a human and I have an ego and I'm, you know, my personality will get in the way of things, but I can get back to center by pulling back and like, op, you know, becoming observational, you know, does this serve me? You know, it, 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 it's the whole, and I put this on Twitter two days ago, but it's the whole, you can choose to respond out of love or you can do what most people do in the autonomic fear frequency of reacting out of fear. We all have a choice in how we hold our state of being, being this. I love saying that, right? Like, so respond out of love. And when you respond out of love, it takes thought. It's not this like, fuck you. You know, you think of, you think of, uh, you know, being cut off in traffic and everybody normally responds in road rage. And I do, and you do, and we all have, but you know, you, you really can control your reactionary, you know, outburst if you choose to. So it, it really, it comes back to whole, you know, what you were saying with oxygen consumption of cells, like, are you balanced? You know, are you centered? Are you collectively calm? Which can't happen unless you're eating healthy foods and you're exercising and you're doing your inner work, you know, whether it's meditation, contemplation, introspection, whatever. But again, dude, like all of us can choose to, to do these things and to be that type of person, but it takes effort. And, you know, you said it already, and I always say it, personal sovereignty. You and you alone are responsible for everything that you create in this reality, whatever it might be. And until you can take that mindset and personify that reality or, or that lifestyle, it's not going to matter because you are literally going to continue to give your power away to whatever external process or person or you know uh, archetype that's out there and i see so many of these young kids i mean i know i told you this on you know your ipod get my the podcast you brought me on your show um my little daughter you know the 12 year olds you know th th they watch youtube all day and, and whatever else and it's like you know even in their school right you know in their distance learning on their computers you know i walk in there every now and then i'm like are you in school and you know she clicks you know she minimizes your screen yeah yeah i'm on school Right. So I mean, like, but 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 they teach them that it's not their fault, Joel. They literally, again, they. I don't know who they is, and we're not going there. But the the whole place is they're now not wanting people to be personally accountable, right? And you and I know where this goes. It's universal basic income. Everybody's a fucking slave. You know, go along, get along, take the chip. I mean, that's really where it's going, bro. Yeah, you know, and just as, as an aside, you have to have you you have to have a balance of that biochemical or physiological nutrient and you know, along with the mindset and the accountability. You can't have one. You can't no. you know, you like you can't outrun a bad diet. You can't outthink no. uh, you know, a metabolic issue. But just one cor small correction because it is a big rabbit hole and I would talk to Dr. Moss if he were available that because he wasn't taught in medical school this, but there's no such thing as iron deficiency. And it doesn't mean that they don't have iron dysregulation and that they can't get uh, enough oxygen delivered to their tissues. Right. Um, but what it ultimately is, is that that iron gets stuck in the tissues and it looks like it's low inside the blood. 
And then they're yelling at that deaf person louder by giving them more iron when the iron's already in the tissues. And that's where it comes down to one of the analogies is the copper is the chef, the iron is the waiter. And so right. you, you need the chefs to cook the meal so that the iron can go out and deliver it to the patrons. But if there's no chef to cook the meals, then you're going to conclude that there's no iron to there's no waiters to to, to do it. And that, that so that's just a small aside. And there's a huge rabbit hole we can go down. But that was one yeah, of no, the thanks for telling me yeah, that. I mean, yeah. are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Just so I understand it uh, clearly that the, there is iron there, it's just not able to be accessed. Right, right. So one of the things, like for men, 120 is the ideal serum iron. For women, it's 100. A lot right. of women or men that I see, I had a guy that I'm just working with today, he's got Crohn's and his iron is 35. Right. Um, and so it would look like he's deficient. It would look right. like there's no boats in the ocean sure. when I'm doing sure. this. Um, but the, there's other markers that show like his ceruloplasm, his, his copper, his transferrin, his hemoglobin that show that there's dysregulation, that he's not moving it out of the tissues. Got it. And just the fact that the serum iron would be low confirms that. But it's wrong to assume that you yell at that deaf person and it's not there and you give more of it, you have to support it getting out of the tissues. And that's not taught in medical school for right, a reason, right, right. You, you know? Well, so, like, so what would, but we'll, so that all makes a lot of sense, but like, what would, when, when would, the, when would there be a deficiency in iron? Or are you saying it's impossible? The, the, like 34, 35% of the earth is iron. How could we ever have a deficiency? So, and we put iron filings in food. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's never a deficiency. Uh, sorry, no. it's never, so it's never an anemia. So it. It, it, it's dysregulated 100%. It. And there's different Got patterns it. where I'll have people that their hemoglobin's low, their, their iron is low, their red blood cells are low, and they have iron that's stuck in their tissues and Got they it. can't get it out. They have cysts and fibroids and endometriosis sure, sure. and hysterectomies and iron infusions. And th there's no gl glyphosate is a chelator Everywhere. of copper yeah. and there's no copper in our soils. And it's, they are just happy for that to be the case because from Pareto's principle, what is 1% of what you can do to have 99% of the the action or the right. the effect that you want to do? There's nothing more sinister and or effective than not having bioavailable copper in your body. And um, that's Dang where it. iron will not be able to be moved effectively. And, and now it's changing our genetics to be more iron, iron focused. And it, it's not going to happen in our life. Anyways, that's a whole other rabbit hole. No, dude, that's really awesome. I'm glad you, I'm glad you told me that. I mean, yeah, cause I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, it's, it's just another thing where there, you know, you can be so gifted, you know, cerebrally and you're be able to study and your things, but then miss things. And again, that's whole, that's allopathic medicine. Okay. So the last point, and, and obviously maybe the most important point is genetic testing as a tool for exhaustion and burnout. Now, obviously, you know me, I'm a huge genetic testing guy. I mean, I was, I'm still Doing, waiting for your DNA. You got to do that. Oh, you shit, send me, yeah, I've been traveling yes, yes. so much. I will, right, I'll that's get all right. That to you. That's all right. I, um, I mean, I literally just got back from Mexico last weekend. I've been, I've just been on, on nonstop, but I, I promise you, I will get it. Just ping me later, text me and I'll send it to you. All you need is my, my, uh, my answer. I mean, my yeah, uh, 23. The raw data. Right? The raw data. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, so Anthony J and I were doing premium webinars on this in 2017 and 2018, you know, at the very beginning, the infancy of all of this. So, I mean, I'm a big, big, not believer, knower in the importance of this. And, you know, I would like it to go, and that's why I was kind of talking to you about this, and we can talk off air or whenever we bro it out. I, I feel that this needs to be incorporated into anyone who's walking the hormonal optimization path now that this should be done before you start optimizing their hormones or playing around in any capacity, right? Because you're going to know polymorphisms, you know, really anything that's aberrant. And I know, and you and I can go rabbit hole again that, you know, it's epigenetics, Jay, who gives a fuck about their DNA, but 
The truth is, is if you know predispositions and you know potentialities, it's always better to have that like macrocosmic view, right? Before you start, you know, tweaking with individual hormones and individual biological systems. So anyway, talk about that as really our final point. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, it's a great point and it's a good setup where the genetics are the blueprint, right? right? I always say the genetics are the blueprint, but because of the work of the pharmaceutical companies that learned about these pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, the effect that it has on our body and the effect that our body has on it, it's not just enough to say it's a lazy man ignorant doctor that will say, oh, genetics aren't anything because they don't understand that I, when I say genetics, I'm saying, what are the cofactors nutritionally that make that gene work? What are the inhibitors that are environmental, like, like glyphosate or cadmium or lead or nit nitrous oxide? There's so right. many in inhibitors. What are the uh, substrates that need that gene to work effectively? What are the end products? And then what are the adjacent 3Ds that feed into that and come out of that? And so what that means in English basically is, is that I want to know, not only do I punch into my GPS settings, okay, I want to Google Maps, I'm going to so-and-so's direction. I want to know if there's a two-lane highway or a four-lane or a six-lane highway, how much tolls there are to get on that highway if I need to go there. Is there a car accident? Um, if there's a cutoff and then I got to make a U-turn and go somewhere else, that's what genetic testing allows someone to do. So if there's a problem with clearing out estrogen in phase one or in phase two, or your aromatase enzymes are more likely to be upregulated or your 5-alpha is going to be upregulated, or you're going to have problems with iron, or you're not going to be able to turn on your antioxidants as effectively, that's going to be important to know. Right. right. So if you know that going into it, it's it's the digital medicine age now where you can make the the profile, the hormone, whatever you're going to be doing that much more available to be made. Like, for example, like for women that do this for for pregnancy to become more more likely to have a baby that have had infertility issues, you want to have a fertile ground for when you start that. IVF or whatever it may be. But a lot of the times when you start to figure out what's not working and what needs to be working and laying down the foundation, by golly, they get pregnant. You don't even need to do that, that type of prop thing in the first place. So it's not to say you can't benefit from hormone replacement, but you might see a lot of the, the challenges with gynomastia or, um, or just having low alpha production and more beta going down this pathway. When you actually regulate your body, eat normal foods, control your oxygen consumption rate, you know, get contract the muscle for once, go outside, eat food that looks like your grandma would recognize. All of a sudden, you don't have the biggest journey to get to the destination as you would if you just expected that magic pill to be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you, you know? You 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 have a way, my brother. You 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 speak in terms and really like methodology that people can understand it's a gift. Definitely. It's a true Thank gift. You. Thank you. No, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you have a great bedside manner. I can tell, I mean, obviously I'm not sat in front of you and you examined me, but I, you, you, you make difficult terms explainable. And that's the key is, you know, relatable. You know, I always say to a lot of these doctors, why don't you bring me on your podcast? I, I want to talk about this. I'm like, bro, because if I bring you on my podcast, a, no one's going to understand a fucking thing you say. And B, you suck on camera. Like, so I'm not going to bring you on my podcast because like, you know, I'm in the business of people watching my podcast. You know, <laughs> you might be the smartest guy ever, but if you can't relate to the person that you're speaking to, who gives a shit? And you can't convey your message, you know, news. you can't get your message across. It, it's the, it take, I remember, and sorry to interrupt. I remember like going no, through a great. lot of different educational degrees and so forth and not to, to brag, but just because the best teachers were the ones where I wasn't scratching my head thinking, <laughs> I don't have an idea, anything what they said. I, cause I, I feel like if there's a bit of dyslexic and ADD, I, I need to break it down in a way that it makes sense to me. And I would have to study and like, okay, Okay, so what does that mean? It means right. like, okay, and my brain just works in a way where right. I can relate it more that way. And that's, I, you can't fake caring, or you know what I mean? Like, no, you, you, at, no. at, at the end of the day, it's funny though, because 
I, I won't call anybody out, but some pretty big name folks, you know, I'll literally be like, and I've learned my lesson, you know, through trial and error and stepping on my dick. But like, you know, I say to him, you have a microphone, right? You want, you want to come on my podcast, you have a microphone and they're just like looking at me, you know, cause it'll be a zoom call or maybe on FaceTime or I'm texting them and they'll be like, no, do I need one? I'm like, why the fuck are you texting me? Like, that's like rule number one. If the audience can't hear you, I can't hear you, <laughs> right. but it's all, it's all relative, right? Like we're all experts in certain things and podcasting, which has become, you know, in vogue and, you know, big now in the last three years is not, you know, for everybody. It's just not, you know, you, 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 you there's an art form here. You got to be able to bring out the best from the guest. You got to be able to ask the right questions. You got to be able to understand what they're talking about. And so, you know, obviously in seven years, and I will brag, I mean, I've been doing this since 2015, right? Like when nobody even knew what the fuck it was, and I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, I just was lucky to get people to come on and talk. And, you know, if anybody goes back and looks at my original podcast, you know, the laugh, right? But that's the evolution of all, you know, life force beings, you know, we get better at what we do, but it's like, it's so funny because at the end of the day, you're right, dude. Like doctors are very smart people by and large. They, they, they memorize all this information. They learn what, you know, the allopathic schools and the big pharma, you know, backdrop, you know, the rulers in the background, you know, want them to learn, but it's one thing to understand it. It's another thing to explain it to a person who doesn't understand it. And you're a gift. You, you have that gift. And, you know, truthfully, I think it's a, a modern thing. Now, obviously you have a podcast, but I really don't think that, you know, 25 or 30 years ago when people had, uh, you know, the God, the lab coat God complex, my doctor said, so that's what I'm going to do. Because as you know, my parents, your parents, you know, that generation of people, bro, if the doctor says to do it, you did it. Whereas like, you know, us, we're much more discerning, scrutinizing, critical thinking. We're like, well, you know what? That's just one opinion. Maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe he's not. But so it's interesting because I think, you know, your generation, you know, we're same generation, essentially, you know, we, we had to get better. You know, we really did have to take difficult concepts and make them relatable and explainable. And again, the way you explain it is just so gifted. And that's, you know, I saw that the first time, you know, in that seminar that, you know, in Vegas at, at, at the biohacking Congress. So, I mean, again, you know, credits to you. So let me put your stuff up real quick. Um, if somebody wants to work with you, podcast with you, and there will be people that will watch this that will want to podcast with you, what, 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 where would you have them go? Yeah, I mean, they could, they would go because I'm, you know, I'm just coming out with drjoelrosen.com. It's going to be like right. a longevity, uh, but they could go to those Facebook group and DM me, and 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 just go to those links there, and I will reach out to them. And just one thing that I was going to follow up on what you said, I think the words integrity, Jay, you, you know, like. I hate the the broke financial planner, you know, or the, right. the I, I know this is politically incorrect, but the out it's of Jay shape, Campbell podcast, dude. Right. You can say and whatever you want. I, I remember posting this on Facebook and I, I got a lot of flack and kickback from it, but I don't think if you're a trainer, you should be obese, you know? And um, you think? yeah. So I, I think it's the same thing for doctors too. And I think that you, you have to practice what you preach. I think it's wrong of a doctor to help you be, teach you, as you know, teach doctor right. to teach you how to be healthy when you're not at least walking the walk, That's you know, right, you bro. come from a lack of integrity. And so I think our generation demand integrity. I, I guess that could be, could be it. Or we or at least the conscientious. I don't know if the younger generations are that way, but I think the word has to do with integrity and practicing what you preach. Right. And not bro, just, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. But to, to the younger generation, I, I got a lot. I'm not letting you go yet. Um, dude, the younger generations don't have it though, because they're not, I mean, think about, you know, again, the overlords telling them it's okay to not be integrous. It's okay to be fat. It's okay to be in metabolically deranged, you know, acceptance. I mean, it's insane that we have now created a reality where no, again, it all goes back to accountability and sovereignty. One of the things that the doctor, not Moss, but uh, the guy earlier today, uh, Dr. Kenny Wilgers, he's in Texas. You know, he said, look, man, I don't have all the fucking answers. And allopathic medicine has no answers in my perspective. And 
as a physician trained allopathically, if I am not willing to listen to a chiropractor, a functional medicine doctor, a naturopath, you know, anybody in the health field today, then shame on me. Because this is a never ending learning process. This is an exploration in human beingness. And I was like, dude, that is so awesome. And and that's where we have to come from, bro. Because, you know, and I will just add, you know, it's not even about just physicians. I mean, there are now people out there who are basically researcher savants who have, you know, experienced through the school of hard knock, the affliction or the condition, and they know better or as good as anybody else. So it's like, we all have to have those ears, you know, again, ears to hear and eyes to see as we move forward and not to be cognitively dissonant, you know, living in our own echo chambers, unable to change. And, and, and dude, I know we've used this on, you brought me on my, on the podcast that I was on, you know, I told you, my wife said that the rule of the last two years is adapt and pivot. And if you're not capable of adapting and pivoting in your mantra, methodology, ideology, propaganda, you know, business, your field, whatever the fuck you call it, then bro, you're, you're useless. Cause we are now in a day and age where everything is changing by the minute. Yeah, absolutely. It's refreshing to to hear that that's out there because I think there's a, a lack of confidence or insecurity to, to have someone challenge your, your knowledge set and, and, and put a mirror in front of you to let you know that you don't know it all. And the fear of, of researching that you may be wrong. If it comes down to a greater purpose of helping people truly from that, you know, I've been in Dow to help people for the rest of my life because I chose right. this profession, then you put your ego aside, right? I right. mean, it's it's amazing. But yeah, that was bro. awesome information. Thank you. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah, no, bro. I love you. Appreciate you. Grateful that you were here today. So guys and gals who watch this amazing show, support Dr. Joel Rosen. Support the amazing people that come on Jay Campbell's podcast. So your new website is drjoelrosen.com. Is it up yet? Yeah, it, yeah it, no, it's not up yet, but it, it, we're working on it diligently but here. By the time that this goes live, it'll yeah. be up there. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> You're awesome. a podcaster. You know how it works. So again, bro, I appreciate you, man. Mad love. Thank you so much for coming on. So again, guys, uh, support Joel. Go to his website, yeah, which will be live by the time you guys watch this, drjoelrosen.com. You can also find out more at the art of adrenal fatigue, uh, the truth about adrenalfatigue.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see everybody real soon. <laughs>